Hi, I'm Old Norse Specialist Dr. Jackson Crawford. In the Eddas, our primary sources for Norse mythology, the rainbow is referred to as the bridge from Midgarðr, the middle enclosure where human beings live, to Osgarðr, the god enclosure where the gods live. The name of the rainbow is in fact given in two different forms. In the Prose Edda, a uh, book of stories told in a fairly cohesive fashion by Snorri Sturluson, it is called Bivrost, but in the Poetic Edda, when it's mentioned, it is called Bilrost, at least in our main manuscript of the Poetic Edda, the Codex Regius, which often includes the only attestations of the poems that are in it. We have uh, the basic description of Bivrost in the Prose Edda by Snorri Sturluson. Uh, this work is mostly composed, at least the part that contains most of the mythology in it, is composed as a uh, question and answer session between a guy named Gangleri and then uh, basically Odin conceived as a trinity high, just as high in third. And uh, Gangleri asks, what is the path to heaven, Asgard, Osgard, from the earth, Mithgard? And uh, Hor laughs and he answers, that is not wisely asked. Has it not been told to you that the gods made a bridge to heaven from the earth, and it is called Bivrost? You must have seen it. It may be that you call it the rainbow, Old Norse regenbogi, meaning the same thing, rain, bow, bow is in a uh, bow of an archer based on its shape. It has three colors, and it is very strong, and it is made with art and skill more than other artifacts of craftsmanship. And even though it is strong, it will break when Muspel's sons, the uh, giants who include Sorter and apparently unnamed brothers of his, go and ride it and they then swim their horses over big rivers, so apparently their weight will crush the, the bridge. That is how they will come forward. Now Gangleri says to Hor Hai that uh, it seems to him that the gods didn't make this bridge well if it's going to be able to break when it seems to him that the gods could do what they want. But uh, High responds, the gods are not deserving of any scorn for this, for this, uh, this craftsmanship. Bifrost is a good bridge, but there is nothing in this world which can be trusted when Muspel's sons raid or ravage. And of course, uh, this is describing the breaking of Bifrost at Ragnarok. Now the name Bifrost is uh, possibly related to the element biv in bivas, meaning to shake or tremble, and then rost, which means a unit of measurement roughly equivalent to a mile, so it could be considered to be the shaking mile. Uh, however, since it is called bilrost in the poems of the Poetic Edda, bil may be related to um, failure or moment. Uh, this is a word that ends up meaning uh, something that kind of winks in and out of existence. Uh, Odin's Bill Oiger seems to mean uh, like failing eyed one. That's one of his names. So it could also be the sort of the blinking mile, the, the winking in and out mile. I'd say that's a fairly uh, a plausible explanation for it. And yet the name that Snorri gives it in the prose of Bifrost is the name uh, that's come to be more famous today. It is mentioned in two poems of the Poetic Edda. Those are Grimnismal, where it is called the best of bridges, alongside, for instance, Skithblathner being called the best of ships, Odin being called the best of gods, naturally because he's the one saying this, uh, Holbrook, the best of hawks, etc. And uh, then in Fulfnismal, it's just mentioned that Bilros is going to break when the, uh, when the giants come over it to fight the gods at Ragnarok. It is also sort of obliquely referenced another place in Green and Small, stanza 29, where we read that the gods, well, Thor in particular, is going to have to cross a few particular rivers, Kormt and Ormt, and two rivers called Kerlaug, uh, to go to Yggdrasil for the meeting of the gods. And the Osbru, meaning God Bridge, will burn all over with flame, Bren Ologa, and the holy waters will. Uh, probably seethe or possibly roar, that verb hloa hasn't been suitably explained. And uh, Gangari, in fact, 
asks about this, about whether the bridge burns or is on fire, he asks in the Prosetta, does fire burn over Bivrost? And High replies, that which you see as red in the bow is burning fire. Up in the heavens, the up into the heavens, the frost giants and the mountain giants would go if everyone was able to travel Bifrost who wanted to. Implying that in fact uh, Bifrost is burning, the red is fire, because otherwise Ragnarok would come a lot sooner. The giants would be able to attack their enemies, the gods. But the fire protects the gods, just as the wall around Oskar partly protects them from their enemies, the giants, as well. I hope if uh, you've enjoyed these videos that I continue to try to make in beautiful places in my Rocky Mountain homeland of Colorado and Wyoming that you'll check out my Patreon. I uh, continue to take the time to uh, put these videos together. Of course, I'm a one-man team, so they're imperfect productions. Uh, because I don't believe that knowledge should be kept inside of an ivory tower, nor do I think that the internet should be abandoned to the likes of Wikipedia and public domain books that have long since passed out of usefulness. I also hope you'll check out my translation of the Porichetta, the Saga of the Volsungs, as well as forthcoming titles, which include the Prosetta as well. And for now, from beautiful Wyoming, I'm going to wish you all the best.